Sometimes you ask yourself, are you successful? Mm. Do you want to talk about what it's like to just fail publicly? <laughs> <laughs> like I had already like knew that there wasn't going to, we weren't going to win. Um, but I feel like for the public, you have to like keep going, right? Yeah. And for the public, you have to put up a face. Success. Mm. Hi, thanks for tuning in for Success, Emin. This is a local Minnesota podcast talking about people who have become successful in their own line of work, whether they've started their own business, had a side hustle, or just been highly successful at their W-2 job. And here we are connecting people. Tune in, see who's on board today. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> this is Nick Kaur. He is my good friend, prom date, and I want to say colleague again, but not a colleague. Not a we colleague. We are purely friends. But he is... For life. And don't maybe go that far. sometime. <laughs> don't go that far, okay? <laughs> um, but uh, he's doing really cool things in the world of politics. He owns his own LLC consultant business now, and it's really cool to see some of the change that he's affecting in Minnesota politics. And let's get into how you get started. All right, let's do it. Um, let's. Okay, so your journey, you graduated St. Thomas. I did. What was your first stop? My first stop. So I graduated from, <clears throat> from St. Thomas with a music degree. And then while I was there, I sort of like discovered this, I guess you can say passion for social justice, maybe, or politics, or like, basically, it was like, it kind of sucked to be gay at St. Thomas, essentially. And like, yeah. and so, um, yeah. Before we move on, yeah. didn't you recently do something at St. Thomas where you I went did. Back? I like went back. Yeah, it was wild. <laughs> so, yeah. okay. So when I was there, it was like, you have to get like permission for everything related to like yeah anything about gay people essentially like and so and a lot of things were not allowed like we couldn't even have a door for national coming out day that's like that was like you know and that was the big thing for me as like i wanted a door <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um and so like there's there was stuff like that and so um yeah i just went back a couple months ago and i talked about history of queerness and I was like you can definitely not talk about any of this stuff when I was back in the day so things have changed a little bit you can progress is being made it is. little by little well I remember uh, now I visited you a couple times at St. Thomas and I went to some of these meetings because mm. you were the president of what board uh, and it was called allies at the time because yes. we couldn't have any of like the LGBTQ words in the name yeah yeah, yeah. do they have an LGBTQ now yeah it is called like QSA or something like that so yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Look at you. Start yeah. like setting a strong foundation for yeah, the next year, yeah. girl. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. Um, so St. Thomas. St. Thomas. And then I was studying music and then I was like, oh, I kind of like this other thing mm -hmm. and like was really passionate, passionate about it. And when I graduated at the time was when the amendment to ban same sex marriage was put on the ballot in Minnesota. Mm hmm. And so I was like, I'm going to do, I'm going to work on this thing. Um, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this thing does not pass. Um, and so I worked on the campaign and that was sort of like my entry point into politics. And it was, yeah, it kind of just like got me into it. We, we ran like a historic campaign in Minnesota. It turned out like the most, you know, people had the most volunteers, raised the most money. Obviously we won. And then five months later, we passed and legalized same-sex marriage at the legislature, and I worked on that one, too. And so, yes, I've been working on that and a number of other campaigns and have been sort of in politics on, like, LGBTQ issues, on, like, Asian-American issues. On um, I also worked in, like, state government. Um, and uh, and then I... Am I, should I go through the whole thing or like, am I like, yeah, yeah I, or so like, yeah. I mean, okay. So <clears throat> you worked on the vote. No. Mm -hmm. And then you bumped around on a few different campaigns. Mm -hmm. That's where you got your experience mm -hmm. for consulting. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I think is so cool about you, because a lot of people get involved in politics, but mm -hmm. not everyone gets the award, the grant that you got. Mm. The Bush Fellowship. The Bush Fellowship. <laughs> Not George Bush. Not George Bush. No, no, no. I, yep. 
It's okay. No. A lot of people make that mistake. Um, I didn't say that I made that now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just because I've made that mistake previously. Yeah. It's okay. Lots of people have. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like, it's actually a local grant, a fellowship, and it's a leadership fellowship, essentially. And um, they basically give you money to pursue your leadership passions <laughs> or mm -hmm. dreams or whatever it is you want to develop. And so um, I was able to spend two years well, one and a half, um, traveling around the U.S. and the world, learning about Asian Americans, Asians in other countries, and the intersections between them and politics and city development and things like that. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, a range of everything. Um, so it was like a cultural exploration. It was deeply personal, and I learned so much about the world. Mm-hmm. And I learned so much about what exists beyond Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> is there something other than Minnesota? <laughs> Apparently, there is. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I think it was like one of the greatest moments, uh, greatest times of my life, just being able to travel around all these different places to meet all these different different people, learn about all these different cultures, and um, yeah, there's just there's just so much out there. That's why I always encourage people to just like go out and like. Mm -hmm. do stuff and what was the country that surprised you about how mm. much you liked it mm. good question um i'm honestly gonna say china for a lot of different reasons mm -hmm. i think china there's obviously there's a lot going on with china and there is a so this was uh, just context this was in 20 i was there 2019 2020 Right before COVID, like literally right before COVID. You came home because of COVID. I came home because of COVID, yes. Yeah. I was in Hong Kong when COVID became a thing. Was it you? <laughs> Maybe it was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I think, the th I think there were so many like things in my head about like what the country would be like. And, you know, obviously it's like a communist country. It's run by a communist party and like... And then you have this impression based on just like our news about like what the country is like and like what the people are like. And sometimes I think we conflate like the country and like the government versus the people and like, you know, just like everyday people who are living there. And so um, I think I had a lot of misconceptions just like sort of shifted. And also I just learned a lot about myself and what it means to be Chinese because I'm Chinese. And so like I learned a lot about a lot more about my Chinese identity and just like how much there is because my identity is like very much like Hong Kong and like Southern mm. China, right? Like, and so there's just like so many regions and it's actually so much more diverse than I, obviously it is, but like than I expected it to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So much more diverse, but were you shocked at how many similarities there were too? Lots of similarity, similarities. Um, but I think I like, I think I maybe like understood all those already. Um, and then the other thing was just being able to like, I think practice my Chinese skills, which was lacking in, mm -hmm. maybe is better now. <laughs> is it better now? Not, not so much. <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> you have to go back. Yeah, I'm going back. You are? I'm going back um, on Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> actually. Did you get another grant? No, I'm just going on vacation. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, rich boy. Mm. All um. points. It's all points. <laughs> all points. Um, okay. Okay. So, so I did Bush that. Fellowship. Bush Fellowship. COVID hit. I was like, okay. So I was in like, uh, I was in, I think I was in Thailand. This was in like April. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, everything's closed. There's nothing to do. I guess I have to come home. And so I came home. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, during this fellowship, like part of it was like, learning about other cities and learning about like how they're tackling a lot of the problems that we're also, you know, that everyone's facing. And, uh, and it was like, I already had this idea of I was going to run for office. Right. Cause I also went to some trainings about running for office mm -hmm. here or there. Um, in the U S yeah, but not okay. in Minnesota. Oh, actually one was in Minnesota and then I went to one in Washington state. Um, but, uh, yeah. So I came home, COVID <laughs> lockdown, then the city burned. Yeah. And then there's global uprising. And for me, it was like, okay, this is like an opportunity 
where like people are ready for some change because there was a lot of stuff that was happening right like everyone was there, a lot was, of stuff it was it was really for me i think like and a lot of people as you re, as you like reflect about it it was like a really horrible time like it was bad it was like traumatizing right like yeah like i think back about it and i'm like traumatized by all of this stuff right mm -hmm. and i think as a society in the U u.s and particularly in minnesota minnesota and minneapolis like seeing that and feeling that with their own eyes but like not really like um, talking about like how traumatizing it was and not really being being able to like heal from all that. I think like we're still, for me, I'm still like, it still brings up stuff and I can tell for you, it's yeah. like bringing shit up too, right? Like a lot of people are feeling that, but we, but I don't think we talk about that, you know, like how, mm -hmm. how like, how shitty of a time that was. Mm -hmm. um, I think what, I think a lot of people saw what happened and then they wanted to say what change can i do mm -hmm. what can i do to help and i think you using that as a partial inspiration to run for office that's huge and that affecting change when something affects you is huge and just to take that step and actually do the motivation to do the work i think that says a lot about you but um yeah the city was burning and it affected a lot of people. And I think there was, so I saw like an opportunity and I think, you know, a lot of people saw like people sort of felt this place that we were in and felt like there needed to be change. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, and that was sort of the campaign that I was running was like, let's, it's time for some, like, you know, we have this chance now to like try and do some stuff that's different and new. And like, um, and like I had been to all these places and I saw like, like what is possible, which is like, there's so much that's already being done that we can just like do here. Um, so let's, I don't think we've clarified. Yeah. Uh, he ran for oh, city yeah, council. Oh yeah, sorry. I ran, <laughs> <laughs> I ran for Minneapolis city council, yes, in Ward 7, which is like downtown and like part of uptown, uh, part of like um, like Bryn Mawr, East Isles, that area, mm -hmm. Kenwood. Um, in what year? 2021, yes, 2021. Yeah. yeah, so that was literally the year after George Floyd was murdered and like COVID and then like all that stuff. Right. Um, but you know, in all that, it, I think, you know, there was a good amount of people who were also not ready for that change so fast. Right. It, it was a lot going on. There was a lot going on. And so like, obviously did not win. Um, and do you want to talk about what it's like to just fail publicly? <laughs> 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 Ooh, that's a good question, actually. Uh huh. You can stall. No, for real. Like, what is it like to fail publicly? I feel like, you know, this is a little weird to say that, like, a few months before the election, like, I kind of knew already. Like, I had already, like, knew that there wasn't going to, we weren't going to win. Um, but I feel like for the public, you have to, like, keep going, right? Yeah. And for the public, you have to put up a face and, like, you had so many people supporting you. Yeah, we had, you know, we had a pretty good campaign, I would mm -hmm. say. You um, did. Yeah. And then, like, I remember for our election night party, like, my campaign manager came up and told me, this was, like, right before I entered the place, he was like, I don't think we got it. I was like, okay. Oh, no. And then, and then I walked in, and so, you know, you still have to put up a face, and then I like, go up on stage and, like, I don't think we're going to win it. Um, mm-hmm. I remember I was standing right next to your mom. Mm. She was like, he's lying. I was like, yeah, he's lying. Oh, really? Is that <laughs> yeah. what she said? And then we found out later you actually mm. lost. But mm. like hugging your mom, like she was she was in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for she sure. She knew you I were going to win. A lot of people were really, you know, were invested, including you, including a lot of, you know, my really close friends and a lot of random people that I had never met before, um, which mm -hmm. is just like, it's so wild how much trust and faith people put into you that people that you don't even know mm -hmm. my friends voted for you because i told them <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and like um yeah it's it you know I, i'm gonna be honest it like made me pretty jaded about yeah. the world and politics um not to say that i didn't have a realistic understanding of it before but it's definitely i'm definitely have a more, much more jaded feeling about mm -hmm. 
everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Uh, so publicly bombing. Yeah, publicly bombing. It was, you know, I. It's it's weird because you still feel like you have to like say shit to the world, you know, like mm-hmm. like after you lose, you still gotta like people are still like following you, and so you still feel like you have to like say shit to the world about, you know, people are expecting you to like say something, so you have to say it, you know, like. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I remember like walking to lunch the day after, um, feeling just a big sigh of relief in a way. Mm-hmm. Like before that, while as I was campaigning, I just felt like a lot of responsibility for like everything. I was like, oh, a stoplight isn't working. Why isn't that? You know, like even little <laughs> things like that, right? It's like. That was your fault. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it's like it, you feel that sort of weight. It's so it's really weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, well, I just think, like, I know that was a while ago. And just because you lost doesn't mean people lost faith in you. Mm, thank you. Mm-hmm. I know. I saw it in your mom. Mm, I saw your mom. Mm, yeah. Um, so that being said, this isn't the first campaign you've lost. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day day. Mm. So, mm. um. Lots of losers, actually. Lots of losers. Uh, The first campaign I ever ran was your campaign for Homecoming King. (laughs) This is correct. (laughs) We, I still have the buttons. Should have used those for my city council campaign. Would have won. You know, King Core really had (laughs) a good ring to it. It (laughs) So, two campaigns. (laughs) Third one's a charm, right? Third one's a charm. So I know you said that you lost faith in politics and you're a little jaded. You didn't lose faith in politics, but you are jaded. Yeah. Would you ever run again? Probably not. Probably not. No. But it's a probably not. Yeah. You know, you never Mm -hmm. say never, but it's a I had an opportunity to run run again uh, for this election, but I chose not to. Mm -hmm. Uh Same ward. Same ward. Yeah. Because the incumbent Lisa Goodman stepped away or stepped down. And so it was an open seat. Um but I think I realized it wasn't really for me. Mm-hmm. Um, the public life, the just like the personalities, the nastiness. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're making yourself a target when you run for office. Totally, yeah. And I think for me, it was like it was sometimes the everyday people, but it was mostly like interacting with like the other egos in the room because there are so many. You know, when you're when you're a politician, you're then you're interacting with everyone else who's also a politician and has like big ego, big ass egos, and like you have big ego too. And so it's like you're, it's like all mm-hmm. of those like big personalities squishing into a room. It's like big egos, big personalities, and big motivations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and people who are like willing to get their way <laughs> or like yeah. get out of the way, or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Huh. So that. Um, mm-hmm. And then once that campaign was over um, and I'm not going to say you lost. <laughs> <laughs> um, but once you stepped away from politics. I'll just say this. We did win because the person who ran this time around who I supported won. There you go. And so the seat you could say flipped, I guess, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually just received. I would look checked in the mail, and I got a, a a little note from her saying like, "Thank you. Couldn't have done it without you know your support X Y Z." That's yeah, so mm-hmm. that's good. That's cool. Once again, yeah. building a foundation. That's that's what it is. Yes. For other people to excel. There you go. Hmm. Yeah. Everything's got a bigger purpose. It does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at you. Um. So and then you started core consulting. I did. And what has the journey from W-2 to politics to 1099 been like? (laughs) There was a learning curve for sure (laughs) to the 1099. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Did you do the whole LLC filing as an S-corp or did it not? I just did a regular Mm -hmm. LLC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's step two. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we'll see if we get there. (laughs) Yeah. You will. Um... You know, it, it was, yeah, it was, I say it was, it was a struggle to be able to just like 
leave your job and then like start a business at the same time. And um, and you went all in. You quit your job. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> I did go slow. Uh, you know, and that would be some advice maybe I would give would be to <laughs> to maybe just like test out the waters just a little bit. <laughs> uh -huh. I think it's nice to like evaluate what a transition would look like. Yeah, totally. And I mean, theoretically, with your background, starting a political consulting mm -hmm. firm mm -hmm. could have accelerated really quickly. Yeah. And you need to be open to those yeah. opportunities. Mm -hmm. so the only way to be open is to quit your job. Yeah. And I also, I think, you know, I wasn't really sure... You know, you have all these plans in your head, and then once you start like implementing, like things change, right? Like, and it's like, oh, that what you know, this type of work isn't really what I want, even though it's what I was like expecting. You know, mm -hmm. like for example, like you know, working with candidates, um, mm -hmm. there was something that in the beginning was like, okay, this is gonna be like the work, but now it's like, ugh, I don't really want to do that anymore. Like, yeah, it's hassle. They don't got no money. They <laughs> they're needy. <laughs> no. um, so it's like things like that. It's like you know, things shift. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I think it's just like a matter of you, you got to hustle. Like, you, you know, you know, this, obviously you've been hustling for a long time. Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So there's, there's a lot of, you gotta, you gotta hustle. And, you know, there's definitely days where you don't, you know, like we've talked about this, where you don't know if you're going to have income in the next mm -hmm. month or three months, or, you know, it's hard to plan your life financially. Um, without a, you know, without a steady paycheck, you know, um, it's hard to plan a year ahead. Um, so, yeah. but you know, there are times when there are big clients and so you get a good amount of money and then it's like, oh, there's, there's a dry period as well. It's like kind of, it's kind of up and down. It's hard to know, you know? Yeah. I found like, it's so hard to budget, mm -hmm. but I think if you just get used to living well below your means mm -hmm. and save mm -hmm. everything and ideally invest in real estate because <laughs> it balances out, it makes sure mm. your bills are paid from month to month. But um, I think that there is definitely a way to kind of adjust to that 1099 lifestyle because it everything's a transition and it's hard to budget when you're on W-2. Mm -hmm. So just rule of thumb live below your means yeah i definitely didn't realize how much i how much less i could how much less i could spend you know like, like uh -huh. oh i could like totally cut down on i did have to start cutting down i was like okay i'm gonna cook every night at home now it's like yeah, <laughs> yeah well you're a good cook so yeah, fine, whatever um oh i forgot we were roommates mm, were we you don't remember either <laughs> no what happened in the house <laughs> Uh, that uh, so we Wild lived times. on Hag and Lexington. We did forever ago. We did with my cousin, with who was on this podcast. Who was the f second one on this podcast? Mm. Yeah, huh. I commented. Um, Who's that cutie? No one responded. Did he ghost you? <laughs> <laughs> I got ghosted by him and the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe. Um, I ignored you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry. That is okay. A little triggered memory there. It's okay. Yeah. Good um, times. Good times. Okay. So consulting, and sometimes it's okay to realize that you need a little bit of help. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I got a full time job now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you caught that transition. <laughs> um, so, what's the full time job? Uh, so now I work. Now I'm, I'm still a consultant, but now mm -hmm. I'm a consultant at the state of Minnesota, which is you know the state government. And so I, we, there's like their own office of consultants that helps on different projects for different state agencies. Um, one of the interesting projects I'm on. So the state legislature just passed last, I think last session, uh, task uh, created a task force to. Mm -hmm examine the benefits of medicinal use of psychedelic drugs mm -hmm. um so all of them mdma lsd and mushrooms okay i can't remember what the drug in mushrooms is um psilocybin yes there you go mm -hmm. good job thank you <laughs> i have flashcards <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's one the one that's one of the projects i'm on is to like support this task force to basically get all their shit done on time yeah okay so they're doing the research to see what the implications mm -hmm. of just legalization or are you going back to square one and seeing what the implications of it are on the human body the human mind um i think 
both, and then they're going to make a recommendation to the legislature for a policy that they could potentially pass if if it comes to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because a lot of those drugs are Schedule One. What's the like the same level as heroin? Oh yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, if you get caught with them, it is straight to jail. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. So. hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, I think it's something that deserves evaluation at least. Yeah. Happy core consulting's on the job. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't core consulting. This is now at the state. Oh, yeah. this is the state. Yeah. So I'm still doing my core consulting, but like on the side, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think, I mean, you've got such a interesting, diverse journey. Mm. But if you could start back at the beginning, mm. what would you do differently? I mean, you have so many different phases, too. So maybe pick one. Mm hmm. Would you jump straight into politics Uh or would you skip? It's so interesting because it's like so much of my past informs who I am today. Mm -hmm. But I think if it were me, I don't know when this would have been, but I would move out and live somewhere else, anywhere else of Minnesota. (laughs) You wouldn't have lived on Hag with me? (laughs) Oh, shoot. (laughs) I would come back to live on Hag with you and then I would. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it's still on my list to just like live somewhere that's not here cuz you know like I did the fellowship but that was like I was moving around a lot. Yeah. Um and so it's still on my list to be able to just like have a life somewhere like try start somewhere new and just like build a life there which I think mm-hmm. is something that I'm sort of trying to figure out right now. Yeah. What do you have your eyes on? Ooh. Where I, is it? I don't know. I that's the hard part is like there are so many things to juggle it's like okay i got a job i would have to find a job somewhere else or you know maybe work remote or live in the states so that would, then i would live in the states but if i want to go you know abroad i would still <laughs> I'd get a new job i have to find a new job but that's like really hard right like um and so and then thinking about like oh, I, pr- I wouldn't make as much money if i was living you know uh probably in some of these other areas abroad like in asia or something like that cost of living is probably less it is lower you are correct yes Mm -hmm. um i think so i had my experience in spain and mm -hmm. that fell in my lap Mm -hmm. so when you have your experience coming up Mm -hmm. it's coming yeah it just hasn't fallen in your lap for sure Something is going to happen to you someday. You're going to get an invitation somewhere. You're going to get fired. You're going <laughs> to, <laughs> it's going to be something that feels completely unexpected, completely mm. out of the blue. Mm. That's your window. Mm. That's when you go. Mm. Yeah. I feel, I feel the, um, the energy of that. Of, mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know if it's going to fall in my lap or if I'm going to like figure something out, right? But I can feel the energy, you know. I think we go through these phases in our lives and like, um, and in our life, remember (laughs) one life, there is only one of ours. Uh, um, what was I going to say? We go through these phases in our life and you feel the energy of a big change coming. Yeah. I feel like there are cycles, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like for the last from like maybe like 2016 to 2020 ish, 2021 or 2021. Yeah. I sort of had this trajectory of like, this is what I'm going to do. This is where I'm going. I had it all planned out kind of, you know, like you had the post-college plan. <laughs> you did. I mean, I somewhat. Yeah. I was like, okay, running for office is something that I'm going to do. Um, but I didn't know when it was just like, I was sort of like building up to it, I guess in a way. Mm-hmm. But when that didn't work out, it was like, okay, now what? That's sort of where I'm at. Like, still, you know, it's been a couple of years, but I'm still sort of like, okay, now what? Um, and it, I think it takes time to figure out. Um, but it's in the beginning, it was like, you know, struggle, like, I don't know what I'm doing. But now it sort of feels kind of exciting to like feel like there's more that there's so much possibility, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, And I don't know what that looks like or what that is right now. And, you know, it might not even be politics anymore, you know, like Mm -hmm. that's for me, it's like, that's okay. Like, um, or maybe I'll keep doing on the side or whatever. Like, that's okay. Um, Like, I just feel an urge for something new and something fresh. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, But 
yeah. think your skill set is just so diverse that whatever comes your way, mm. you'll be able to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's rare that you find someone that can be a master at classical Spanish guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I should go back to that. You just go play, you know, oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you should go back to your classical Spanish guitar. Don't give up on World of Warcraft. Mm, that was a long time ago. Given up, I'm sorry. Gave up a while ago. Okay, well, I guess some dreams do die. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it, it, politics is one thing. Consulting consulting is so different because yeah. you look at so many different arrays sure. of what you can do. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you think that you'd be studying psychedelics? No. <laughs> Most people don't. No idea. And you're out here figuring it out. Yeah. Um, so I think whatever's next for you, even though it feels very unknown, unknown is good. Yeah. I, I, and I think at, in the beginning and at times it felt rough, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I don't know what this feels like. Cause I had had this plan and it was like, now what, you know, it's like, yeah. but now it feels a little liberating to be able to like figure that out. Um, but still be unsure, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think, um, The secret to living a happy and fulfilling life is new experiences. Mm. And you need the routine to feel at home. You Mm -hmm. need to be grounded. Mm -hmm. You need to move forward. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a study that was done of um, your day feels longer if you're experiencing new things Mm. every single day. Mm. So if you wake up and you put your shirt on backwards, you're like, oh, this is new. (laughs) <laughs> like and it, it can be something as simple as that. Mm. Your day is going to feel more full if you put in new experiences. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So, like go to a new coffee shop for breakfast. Mm. Your day is full. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, I should do that. Go to a new. Co- I do go to a lot of coffee shops, but yeah, go to some of the same ones now. So mm-hmm. go to some new ones. Yeah, you got to break free. Yeah, your life will be better. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, whatever's next, I think you'll figure it out and. Then the next step, we'll have you on the podcast again. After I figure it out? Yeah. <laughs> and we'll talk about that transition. Yeah, let's do it. We'll love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so success looks different to everybody. Mm-hmm. How do you define success? Good question. Um, yeah, I really think success is in the eye of the beholder, right? And like, you know me or you like i could see myself as like oh i don't think i'm successful at all um or like you could see that in your i'm not saying that's this is true but like you could see that in yourself but like when people are looking on the outside they're like oh my gosh you have like you've done all these things you have all these skills Mm -hmm. you've like built a company right like like all these accomplishments uh and so for me i think it's just for me it's a it's a matter of being able to really just achieve your goals like Mm-hmm. What are the things that you want um, for yourself um, and being able to reach those things? Um, you know, it's funny about so you were just saying, oh, you've done this. You've built your business. Da, da, da. What I was thinking of as you were trying to give me this compliment of being successful mm-hmm. was my to do list. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like it's just yeah. it's it, it doesn't feel, you know, when you're in it, it doesn't feel like mm-hmm. it. it feels like uh, a struggle. Right. It feels like. It feels rough, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I think that's that's good because if you achieve something and then you just sit back, you're like, well, I did it. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be known for one we want, thing no, for the we rest of your get life. There. That's where we want to get. We want to get to a spot where we're just like, we have it all. And we can just be like, all right. <laughs> we already have it all, Nick. Oh, okay. We do. I like that. Okay. We okay. Um, no, I think this phase of life is really good. Yeah. Like, our siblings are all happy and doing well. Mm-hmm. Our parents are happy and doing mm-hmm. well. Our friends are just hitting their stride. I think this phase of life is super exciting. 35. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, well, 22. We like it. I'm 22. I'm <laughs> 22. Um, yeah, you cradle Robert. <laughs> Sorry. Happy, happy belated, by the way. Oh, thank you. Uh, you too. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> We're both Scorpios. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, so I think, um, are there any regular habits you have that keep you successful? Um, so I'm a, I think I've just learned what's good for me in terms of like what keeps me going and like when I can't 
do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I was on the campaign, like I was go, go, go all the time. And so like, mm-hmm. it was really important for me to be on a strict schedule where I was like, work, go to the gym, work on campaign stuff. And then like, I would like write up, f- I would like li- literally write up like a few things on my phone about like how I was feeling during the, uh, uh, after the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really helpful for me to just like be able to have a schedule to be able to keep my body healthy. Um, things like that and so I think I've kept some of those things but I haven't kept all of them Um, I think like going uh, going to the gym has is really helpful for me I think like getting up mm, weird that I'm now an early riser so like (laughs) so weird it's so weird (laughs) I used to hate getting up early in the morning (laughs) I know you did (laughs) I yeah that yeah you too I know you did too I Mm -hmm. know and now I'm up with the sun every day yeah same Mm mm-hmm And like, but that's when I get all my stuff done. It's like, I'm so with coffee, of course, I can't do anything without coffee, but like that I can get all my stuff done in the morning, but then after lunch, I'm done. I cannot. <laughs> you would need a little siesta. <laughs> I do. Yeah. That's what I was doing Make back when Spain I was consulting. Yeah. I was definitely taking a little siesta back when I was, you know, before I had a full-time job. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was really nice. It's really <laughs> it nice. It's really nice. Yeah. It's really bad to get used to, though. <laughs> like, yeah, coming back from Spain, that was definitely my habit, mm-hmm. but it fit in culturally there. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, I still love it now. Yeah. Even like a 30 minute nap, solid. Yeah. Solid. Even just a 30 minute sit down. Oh, I need yeah. a break. I need Good. to disconnect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely need some breaks for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you're on the go, right? Like, usually, so, which is nice. Or sometimes maybe. My breaks are my like podcast breaks in my car. Nice. I don't listen to my own podcast. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it. I think breaks are really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. For me, it's like because I, it's I. I do not. I. I do like. So I'm like remote, right? So I'm working from home, which is nice. And like, I hate being in Zoom meetings. Yeah. Like one or two days, like the most I can do. It's mm-hmm. like otherwise, it's just like drags and i just can't yeah. focus and it's like it's it it's is, watching a tv that you have to talk to yeah and like i'm sitting on the chair the whole time and i, I don't like that either so it's like mm-hmm. i need to like I like move being able to move around i need to get myself a standing desk is what i need there you go <laughs> yeah i was gonna say better chair but yeah also maybe a better chair for sure mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Mm. yeah so what was your question habits um yeah, I don't think so. I think that those things, just like knowing, knowing when I can get my shit done. Yeah. Knowing when I needed to like take care of myself, take care of my body, cooking more for myself, mm-hmm. those kind of things. Yeah. And resting, I think. Like, Siestas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, like not going. I used to be so go, go, go all the time. Mm-hmm. But like now I'm like, just chill. Let's just chill. Mm-hmm. And you just chill. So after your phase of chaotic go, 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 it's hard to get re-motivated. Mm. What gets you re-motivated? I don't you, know. You had this, like, I mean, you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you had this career where you were, like, entirely self-motivated. I've got to get yeah. out. I've got to run my own campaign. Yeah. I've got to get out. I've yeah. got to work out. Yeah. I've got to do all yeah. of these things to live my life and my dreams. Mm-hmm. And then that ends. hmm and then you have to get started again. Yeah. Like what what gets you motivated to go out and get new clients? What gets you motivated to cuz it's not money anymore. Oh, it was money. Oh, it's money. Now it's not. <laughs> now it's not. It was before for sure. <laughs> money is a very good motivator. It is a good motivator cuz like, you know, I mean, it it's rough when you're like, "Oh, I ain't got no money coming in." <laughs> it's it's rough. It's rough. It's depressing. Yeah. It's scary. Yeah, it's scary. It is anxiety triggering. Yeah. I think I didn't I didn't appreciate money as much until I started my own business for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like every dollar now. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Which at at the time before like you know I was always a W2 employee so I was always had at least some sort of money coming in. Um and so like just like the idea of oh next month I don't know if I'm going to you know I got to figure something out you know whatever it is I can do to make money I'm gonna do it you know like you really just like get in this survival mode yeah (laughs) which for me it's like if it's a good experience for me to know and understand 
so I can appreciate it more, you know? Like, mm -hmm. otherwise before that, it was just like, you know, I was just getting a paycheck every whatever, two weeks or something. Yeah. Yeah. So now is it more like you're working to build your own reputation or is it, is it still just money? Like if you could just sit at home and watch Star Wars all day. Yeah, I would do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I mean, we all got options. Um, I mean, I think, so I've spent so much time in my career on like the world. Yeah. I'm like, what am I going to do for myself? <laughs> yeah. That's where I'm at right now. It's like, what am I going to, and so maybe, you know, part of that is money. It's like, yeah, maybe I do want to like, grow my wealth a little bit more, you know, like be able to, I don't, maybe this was on your podcast or someone else's podcast or somewhere else I heard this, but like you said, you know, you said money is a tool, right? Like it's a tool. It's a tool. And you know, sometimes people say money can't buy happiness, but you know, maybe it can. <laughs> like, um, it doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy comfortability. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have money to, if you don't have money to eat, like how are you going to be happy? Like that is not happiness right there, you know? Like, yeah. so, and there are things that I want to do, like, and it, like you know, like, like, like you said, money is a tool. It'll help you get to the things that you want because, you know, love it or hate it, we live in a capitalist society, right? Like, that's just the system that we live in. And so, like, if you want to, <laughs> if you want to succeed or if you want to do the things you want to do, like, your biggest tool is your money. Like, that's how you're going to get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, late stage capitalism is what we're in, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> With it, and, it, and it just becomes so depressing. Honestly, I see so many people struggling all the time. Mm -hmm. Like I have clients from every different income mm -hmm. range mm -hmm. and it's crazy to see those different dynamics and people who, if they, if interest rates go up, they can't mm. afford a house because mm -hmm. if they buy that house, they can't afford their food. Mm. That's, Damn. it's crazy. Mm -hmm. So like these interest rate hikes, they're not, I mean, they're kind of affecting people, but who they're affecting most are the people who need the help the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I, I hate seeing people struggle. Yeah, for sure. Those, because like, I know how hard it is. Yeah. I've put rent on a credit card before mm. and that's, that, that, <laughs> that's, that's struggling tight. right there that's, that's struggling tight. <laughs> <laughs> and it, i just think you get to this point and then my 20s like yeah. i i don't think i've ever talked about it definitely not on this podcast but mm. i had my spanish teaching business mm -hmm. i was bartending mm -hmm. i had real estate mm -hmm. and i slept three hours a night mm. and that was it that was it um yeah i never knew that that were you i mean maybe four were you, <laughs> were you struggling financially at the time, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Mm. Because real estate. I mean, you were just starting real estate at the time, right? Like, just starting yeah. real estate, working on my client base mm. and trying to build up a book of business. And also it's scary to launch from consistent income. For me, it was bartending in my Spanish yep. class or Spanish teaching business mm -hmm. and to leave that. To go full time into a career where I might not get paid mm -hmm. for months. Mm -hmm. That's nuts. Yeah. That's crazy. For sure. That is a huge risk. And I think now it's to a point I've been very fortunate to be able to streamline my business. The people who work mm -hmm. with me like working with me. They mm -hmm. trust me. They mm -hmm. love me. Some of them love me. <laughs> and I just feel so fortunate to be yeah. where I am. And that opens up the door to other motivations. Mm -hmm. It gets to yep. the point where money is a tool. Yes. And that's the goal. Mm -hmm. And obviously I'm biased. I'm a realtor. But that first step is to buy your first house. Mm. Once you buy your first house, your biggest bill is stable. That's the biggest thing. People talk about equity. They talk about timing the market. No. The best thing about buying a house is your monthly payment does not change. Unless you own a condo. I was going to say that. <laughs> Your association is playing you. Oh, you are... looked it up? Did you look that up? <laughs> I'm not. No, I don't want to get depressed. I'm not looking it up. But uh, you told me about it. Yeah, it's not cute, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's still not as much, you know, it's still not as much as having to pay rent. Yeah. 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 And, like, it is most of your utilities. There are benefits. Your pool got a lot nicer. A lot of like, things got nicer. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, everything has a cost. Mm-hmm. 
for sure. But, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, no, it's, it's crazy to, um, yeah, it's crazy to see how much you grow in the years because we were broke together. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. That house on Hag. Oh, mm. my God. Not the, cute. the carpets were nasty. It had pizza stains in it and uh, <laughs> one bathroom Ooh. and the enamel on the tub. Ooh. Oh, do you remember the tub used to leak into the basement? Do not remember that. That's good. That's because you <laughs> never did laundry. <laughs> 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 Every time someone would take a shower, the tub would leak into the basement, mm. and then you'd go down and do laundry. There'd be a puddle. Yeah. Never never realized that, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember I texted our landlord, like, hey, I know I'm just a new little realtor, but I think your roof is leaking. <laughs> he ghosted me. <laughs> he didn't care. He this didn't is when care. you were, we were living there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. He didn't care. Yeah. The roof is probably still leaking. Probably. Mm -hmm. Stumbler status. It was it was a cute <laughs> house, and then but <laughs> if uh, if our rent was ever late, he hit us up mm, for sure. He did. Yeah, yeah. Got to get your money. Um, so how many years are you now as a realtor? How many years has it been? Eleven. Ooh, it's already been ten years. Past ten. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah, eleven. Ten ish. Ten ish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've had my team for over a year now. Right. So it's been it's been good. It's been good growth. And. How long would you say it took you to get to a place where you felt where you felt uh, stable? Maybe stable is a good word for it. So it's tricky because I was afraid to take that jump. I was afraid to quit my mm. Spanish business, and also I liked Spanish business, like mm. teaching kids. You show up, mm. you do a half hour class, and bartending. And bartending. Bartending I did not love. <laughs> <laughs> but you kept doing it. <laughs> kept doing it because you go. Like, like there were some nights where I would walk with, like, over $1,000 oh. for a four-hour shift. Wow. Like I, didn't, I never realized that. The money was dumb. Mm. I hated it, mm. but the money was stupid. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, yeah, no, I, so because I never fully committed to going full-time mm -hmm. and doing the... 100% self-employed thing, I feel like that is what hurt my business more than anything. Mm. So I probably wasn't like making enough money to live off of till I was doing it four years. Four years is still a pretty good time, it's, I think. It's so you could have done it in three, maybe? Two. I think I could have done it in two. Two years? I just, yeah, because I was probably working 20 hours a week Yeah. with Spanish, mm -hmm. and maybe more, because there was a time where I had four teachers working for me. Oh, yeah. You had your own business. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the trainings and yeah. The, um, yeah. scheduling pickoffs of, yeah. or like drop offs of materials and all of that. That was, it was just like a lot. Um, so. But yeah, look, hard work pays off. Hard work pays off. And I think the, the teaching, grind, the grind pays mm. off. And I think the teaching background really helped me now, now being like a team lead, mm -hmm. teaching strategies, pedagogy. 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 Yeah. Yeah, is that the word? <laughs> One of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a good study on teaching methods, which mm -hmm. has been mm. a good idea of how to structure a team and mm -hmm. build a good mm -hmm. learning environment yeah. for people. Yeah. So um, everything for a reason, everything to build a foundation. There it is. There it is. There it is. Look at you. Oh, God, just <laughs> learning from you every day. Um yeah, so it, it, it took me a while to get started, and when I, th there became a point where my success was too much, and mm. oh my God, I was exhausted. I was working, th so right when COVID happened, that's right when the market took off, mm. and all of these clients that were waiting for rates to drop came to me, and I'm not teaching Spanish. So, I've so got was this during COVID or right before? Right when COVID started. Okay. Like I remember, and the rates went even further down when COVID hit. Is that yeah? Okay. Because we didn't want to stop the right, economy. Right, right. So I remember the shutdown happened. I had a closing that week, mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. clients called. They're like, "Can we buy our house?" I'm like, "Yeah, you can." <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going, um, but we were showing houses. There was masks. I was mm. working 18 hour days. My phone Damn. would start ringing at 6:30, 7 in the Damn. morning, and. Then it, I'd I'd be doing paperwork till midnight, and crazy. It, it it was nuts. Yeah, it was nuts. So that level of craziness 
has um, that's really what inspired me to start my team. I can't mm. do that. I cannot do that by myself mm -hmm. ever again. Mm -hmm. So reach out to your networks, find out who supports you and what kind of team you yeah, need, yeah. and then build that up. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Stop interviewing me. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very curious about you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so who's been your greatest mentor? Do you have one? You know, I was thinking about that. I'm like, I don't know who my mentor is. I think it's really hard for me to ask for help in general. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm very much like a I need to do it myself kind of person. Or Partially to... why you're so successful. Maybe. I don't know. I think there's like a fine line. You need to be that kind of person who never asks for help so that you figure it out. But there becomes a certain point where you're like, I am recreating the wheel here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It gets exhausting. Like yeah. there's no way that somebody that you know hasn't run for office and won. Right. You know, like you could always yeah. go to them for advice. I think that was that was part of also like, you know, my downfall is the wrong word, but um, like it was so hard for me to ask for help from those folks because I always felt like I was like bothering people or whatever and like um and so there were definitely people like that that I knew um but I I it was hard for me to go and like get support and it still is to this day I think as my entire life has been hard for me to like um just get support when I when I need it um but there are people that I like you know that I um <laughs> that I'll ask for help for or like, you know, and there's people in my life who have invested in me and people in my life who taught me like my mom, um, the right way. She is one hell of an entrepreneur. She is. She always has been. She has been. And Emily Kaur, she owns Rouge Salon mm -hmm. in on, Saint Selby. Paul, on Selby. Yeah. And, uh, she's had a salon for a long time <clears throat> since before I was born. Uh, was on, was in, in St. Paul, then in Minneapolis, in uh, off Lindell, and where Baby Zito curl up and die, curl up and die, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's the ice cream shop there. Is it called Baby Zito? Yeah, yeah. That's where her shop was. Okay. Um, and then she moved out of that and bought her own building. Yep, a St. commercial Paul. building a commercial with building. a apartment up top. The apartment up top. She, you know, she knows. She knows what she's. You know, she's. She tried to get you to invest in real estate. <laughs> she did. Yeah. You said it was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> did I say that? <laughs> you said you didn't want the hassle. Mm. <sighs> it is a little bit of a hassle. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. No, Everything's a yeah, hassle. No, you're. You, and she's, of course, as always, right. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. Yeah. You and so yeah, and and so she built up this business, and she's had it for ever now, and she still has it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she cut my hair once. Mm. Yeah, how was it? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think she too. dyed it too. She cut cuts her hair, hair all the time. Yeah. How was she it? Actually, cut my hair kind of like yours. Mm. Cute. Thanks. <laughs> 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 um. So, I mean, we're kind of talking about houses. So, <laughs> are we? <laughs> uh, I mean, now we are. Uh, <laughs> it is a real estate podcast. And do you want to talk a little bit about your home buying journey? Mm, yes. Um, I bought my home in 2017 now, I think. That sounds right. Yeah. It was all a blur to me. <laughs> <laughs> how many? How many did we see? I don't think we saw that many. No, because I was like... I was like, I need to buy something right now. I was yeah. like, I, I'm like ready to buy. Like, I was in a place where I, was, had, I think I had just broken up and gotten out of a pretty, oh. like a th maybe like a three year relationship. And I was like, You bought the revenge condo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was a thing. <laughs> it worked. Oh, yeah. It, it, I definitely did. I was like, uh, I needed like a new life, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was at the time living at my grandma's place, which I had bought. For my oh mom my in Columbia Heights, for a whole another reason, um, but um, but I, and I was living there with my ex, and so then I broke up. I was like, I need to get out of this house. It was like you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> not what I wanted, to, where I wanted to be yeah. in the suburbs. Um, and so like I know I like wanted to move downtown. I think like there were a few things I wanted to buy a condo. I think is what well we did look at a few houses, 
Yeah. And then I, I think I wanted to live in Minneapolis around downtown. Those were like some of the things that, um, and then I think we just found, I don't know how we found it, but it was affordable and. I think we looked at three in your building. Yeah, we did actually. Because the association fees were so low. They were low and now <laughs> they are not. <laughs> they got you. They got you, man. <laughs> and now they are not. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, yeah. Only I think, honestly, homeownership has been life changing. Um, I It's like very comforting to know that you have your own place. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's never going to change. And it's never going to change, and it's yours, and there's a lot of security that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of, like, you free yourself from the hassle and stress of, like, of, like, trying to figure out if, you, you know, your, when your lease ends, or, like, where am I going to live next? And moving. Oh, I hate moving so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the worst thing. <laughs> you know you can hire that out. Yeah, can I? <laughs> you need money for that. Okay, Mr. Going to, <laughs> <laughs> going to Hong Kong, round two. Um, <laughs> yes. So what was your question? I can't remember. Um, what was buying your house like? Mm. Oh. Yeah. I think you can it was good because I got my house through you. So Yeah, that's really the only reason it was good. Yeah, other, every, every other experience is going to be horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you know, don't work with another realtor. Yeah, and I got to hold a cute little sign. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what that's what it says. Do you still do that? Sold. Yeah. Do you still do that? No. So I stopped doing it. Um, if somebody asks me to do it, I'll do it. Um, but it just feels really like gimmicky, honestly. Mm. Hi, mm. let me use you for advertising. I liked it. <laughs> yeah, I did use you. <laughs> <laughs> but like I just feel like buying your house is such like a personal thing. And if your realtor's using you for publicity, I know I've done it before, but it just feels you know, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I feel yeah. And um, I saw this other realtor say, you know why I don't post people that I sell houses to? Because they're famous. I was like, oh, <laughs> no. dang. <Okay. laughs> so like that. W- one day when I sell a house to a yeah. famous person, I've sold houses to Minnesota famous people. Mm, like who? I can't tell you. <laughs> 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 but I. Uh, yeah, not anyone that's like been on TV consistently. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, so like I, I just, I just don't want people to feel like I'm using them. Makes sense. You know, I want them to have their experience buying a house, mm-hmm. and while I'm a part of it, I don't need to take all the credit because realistically, a a client agent relationship is a, we're in this together. Yeah. You find the house, I make it happen, but really, it's your finances. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll kind of coach you a little bit, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to take away. You've been saving up to buy a house for five years. Now I'm sitting here taking credit for it. Mm-hmm. No, I didn't do that. Mm. I made the transaction happen, but you did the work. Yeah. So Makes sense. I kind of, if they want to do it, I'll do it. But it's definitely not on my checklist of things to do anymore. Gotcha. Yeah. So. Realtor growth right there. Realtor growth. That's some realtor growth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah, um, I will post my listing <laughs> nonstop. <laughs> but um, so, <laughs> do you have a favorite place that you lived? In Hag, obviously. Yeah. Or maybe the CC. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my God, the CC. That was okay. So there's probably going to be ten people listening that <laughs> <laughs> know what the CC was. There was a party house at St. Thomas that was just notorious. Honestly, this is where I made most of my friends. Through me. <laughs> Through you. <laughs> yeah. I'm just um. Yeah, that was a great house. Yeah, it was for def- sale. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We went to it. We went to see it. It's pretty had, gross. Still had the same grungy basement. Everything. <laughs> Gum stuck on the wall. <laughs> the markings that we made are still there. <laughs> uh huh. Graffiti. Yeah, that's definitely. Not that we did it. No, we did not. Innocent until proven no, guilty. We did not do that. Yeah, <laughs> that was not us. <laughs> no, that that was fun. I think it, I think it's really cool about where you live. Kind of says where you were in your journey at that time, and. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun journeys that together. An, that was fun, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely not one of my... I mean, it was a good time, but living-wise, it was... Drama. Not 
Also, you were living like in the Harry Potter room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cheaper rent. <laughs> Cheaper rent. Yeah, that was a good bargaining. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but Hague was fun. I think my favorite place where I've lived, not counting like you know my travels because it's not really living, but um, has been my house right now. Yeah. The condo. The condo. With a good pool. With a good pool. And the high association. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm curious, actually, you know, at the, the ones that we were looking at when I was when we were when I was buying a house, because mm-hmm. those were at where are my condos at now. So I'm like, how much have they gone up? Your condo? Because, no, like the other ones that we were looking at that had a really high association that like, um, because those were at like basically where I'm at now when we were looking, mm-hmm. and so like. I'm curious how much more it's gone up, you know? Yeah, it's hard to say because I don't remember which building you're talking about. But I don't either, but I do remember that there were some pretty high ones. Yeah, I think just... I mean, you can just look at the association and see, or the condos and see, I guess. Yeah, I think we we definitely can pull comps, like, if you if you want me to. But just right generally now, right speaking, now. I, just kidding, I need kidding. a computer. Um I think just generally speaking, if the housing market is mountains and valleys, the condo market is mole hills and ditches. Mm. Like it's it's a this and it's a this for everyone who's watching the video. Yeah. But um, yeah. Now I know to buy a house next time. So, I mean, so let's say you buy your condo for $100,000 and then 10 years from now you sell it for $100,000. You had somewhere to live for free. Yeah. So, you know, um, that's another benefit of home ownership. Yeah. I don't regret it at all. I love no, it. No, I no, love no. It. no. I love it. It's your favorite place. It's my, <laughs> it is my <laughs> favorite place. It's got a great pool. It's got a great view. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's got a, you know, a lot of amenities. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I do great really location. like your condo. Um, so, wrapping up. Mm. Okay. Well, no, I have two final questions. Two final questions, okay. One. Yes. Where's the best chicken wings in town? Ooh, best chicken wings. <laughs> Crazy question. Was not expecting that. Let me think. I feel like I just had some really good chicken wings, but I cannot remember where. This is probably the craziest question oh I've ever gosh. asked. Where did I? Oh, my gosh. I seriously th- had some really good chicken wings. Are you gatekeeping? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Name a neighborhood. No, I can't. I can't. Oh. Best chicken wings are the ones that I cook. What a cop out. I'll make some for you. Okay, wait. Okay, not a cop out. Okay, well, oh, wait, what is the name? <laughs> Why can I? Okay. Think so, of the, I can't think of these names. Okay, go ahead. Wait, what were we going to say? Our go-tos. Yes. Spring Street. I was going to say that. That's the Petro's favorite. Yeah, Smack Shack, surprisingly. I haven't, don't remember what their chicken wings are like. Red Rabbit. Red Rabbit, yes. Cedar Inn. Never been there. Ooh, take me there, please. Okay. Not after this. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Oh, I was going to say, um, I think Firebox has pretty good chicken wings. I don't know. Have you had those chicken wings? No, I haven't been. Okay. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. I'm failing at this question. I feel bad about this one. Can we cut? <laughs> cut the phone. Yeah, you got to cut this one out. <laughs> don't cut. Don't God, cut. Do cut. <laughs> um, no, okay. I swear I was just somewhere that had really great wings. Ugh. I was like, oh, I got to come back here. And you didn't even tell me about it. And I didn't even remember. I didn't even freaking write it down. Now I'm never going to remember it again. I think you're just gatekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> um, last question. Mm. What's one phrase that you live by? Oh, I should have thought of this beforehand. <laughs> That's a great phrase, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what is a phrase that I live by? Do you have this much moaning in your Yeah, this is my every day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally my every day. What's one thing your mom tells you consistently? Uh, there's one thing that, you know, I think I already said this, but, like, there's so much more out there. Like, yeah, there is so much more out there for you as an individual to do and to explore and to learn and to grow. Um, and there's so much more for us as people to just like see and like experience uh so i see so i say that in both like an internal like you know 
there's so much more that I can do. Um, and, you know, this is a success podcast, right? So there's so much more that I can do. There's so much more that I can like, um, figure out for myself. And like, so there are so many more things that I want to accomplish. Right. Um, and then I say that as like, just as a society is like, step outside of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. get outside of that box. Right. Like, like go see you go to a new, co- like you're saying, go to a new coffee shop every day, like mm-hmm. go experience something new and it, it can be here, but also like go somewhere else where the people speak a completely different language from you. Yeah. Like, what is that like? You know, like go somewhere that doesn't have internet. <laughs> uh huh. What is that going to be like? Right. Like, yeah. Go to a remote Island, right? Like go to the coldest place on earth and, and things like that. It's like, <laughs> we live on the closest place on earth. We're already there. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I just feel like there's so much growth that is still ahead of all of us. Yeah. Um, and it's attainable. It's totally attainable. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely attainable. And it takes work and you get you like you got to, you know, you got to work to get there. Like you, it's not going to fall on your lap for some people. It might, but for us it's not going to so no we gotta we gotta try a little harder you know just try a little harder try a little harder every day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and, and if you're have... tired just like take a little nap a little siesta yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> well i'm off to take a siesta hmm. at uh 7 30 well they don't know what time we're recording <laughs> oh, shoot. this in the morning cut it, cut it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh this is our new year's podcast oh yeah new year new vibes so you know <laughs> like so like we're you know we're gonna there's so much out there so it's a new year what are your freaking um oh are you gonna resolutions? Ask resolutions you don't i know i'm not gonna ask you i'm gonna ask the listener what the res- what their resolutions are and like I looked at like some of the things I wrote like last year. I'm like, oh, I didn't do any of those things, but, mm-hmm. but uh, they weren't real then. Yeah. If you're not going to do it, don't, you know, like they're not real. So. Yeah. Okay. So you had resolutions, but did you have a plan to execute them? Did not. That's what you're doing this year. Do the same resolutions. No, it is happening this year. I have. You my have pl- a plan. I don't have. A, hmm. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't have a plan yet, but I have a plan for a plan. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, that's step one. Yeah. The other ones, I didn't even have a plan for a plan, so. And, you know, my, the other ones were just, like, basic things. They're just, like, little things. This one. Can you tell me. me? Well, I'm planning to move. Oh, out. you're, you just said it's your favorite house. <laughs> 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 Where are you moving out? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. So no, that. That's, that's what I'm figuring out this year. We like talked about the dream. Yeah. And your resolution is to figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, cool. Do you don't know where don't know where I'm going. Don't know how I'm, how I'm gonna get there, but I'm gonna figure it out. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't think you've done the South America trek yet. I've been to Brazil and. Oh, you have. And um. Where else did I go? <laughs> Where's Machu Picchu again? Peru. Peru. I've been to Peru. Yes. Yes. Um, well, I mean, if you need Spanish lessons, let me know. Yeah, I know, since I, you know, broke up with my boyfriend who speaks Spanish, so. Is that why? Sad. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well you know, everything we for a reason. Yeah, there it is. Everything for a reason. Everything for a reason. It's true. Since you ended it with him, should we end it there? <laughs> Cut that one out. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah. All right, guys. Say goodbye to Nick Cork. All right. Peace out. (laughs) (laughs) Big sis. Mm.